It's day three of Intersolar Europe 2016 and also the EES show, Electrical Storage, here in Munich. Everyone's a little bit tired, but the hall we're in right now, B1, is an absolute hive of activity. There's a number of reasons for that, and to talk us through why that's the case, I'm joined by Gertz Fischbeck. He's the CEO of Smart Solar Consulting. Gertz, why is there so much interest here in storage? I mean, what we've seen in Germany is that really in the residential segment, attaching a storage system to your PV system has become a no-brainer. So people, when they now install new solar systems in Germany as residential customers, we have a penetration rate above 70% this year, 70%. Last year we were in the range of about 40%, so this has even gone up. People realize that if they want to invest in solar today, it only makes sense if you attach your own battery to it to really consume the energy on site that you manufacture yourself on the roof. Well, a lot of the leading suppliers are here in this hall. So can you take me around? Let's have a look at some yes, of them. So let's have a look. There's some interesting things I can show you. First stop on our whirlwind tour of the storage displays here at the EES and into Solar Europe. We're, we're here with SolarWatt. What, what are they bringing to the market? Well, SolarWatt is one of the suppliers from Germany with home storage systems. They already actually introduced the product to the market with a huge splash last year. But this year, it's actually available to customers. And their system, as you can see behind me, is actually distinguished from other systems by the speed of their reaction. They claim to have the fastest battery response to any kind of load change. And that is important because people wouldn't actually assume that at home you have a lot of consumers that actually trigger on and off on a rather short basis. So you need battery systems that respond quickly to the change in load in order to really make the best use of your solar energy. Okay, solar what? Let's move on. Well, we're making ourselves at home here. Um, we're now at the Sonnen booth, another German supplier. The Sonnen community was launched a few months ago and from all reports is being taken up with great enthusiasm. Why is it that Sonnen community is a new offering in the storage space? Well, I mean, Sonnen community gives the chance that different owners of home systems actually interconnect and you have the renewable energy transported within the members of the community. So not only is it cheaper than drawing the electricity from the grid, but it's people that have the same attitude that want to bring forward the so-called Energiewende. And this is a huge success with customers. So the uptake rates have been amazing. I mean, over the last few months, they now have reached customer uptake rates of more than 90%. So anybody who's interested in the Zonen battery also signs up for the Zonen community. So it's no longer just a battery system that they're selling. They're selling a long-term utility-style relationship. Well, we're talking about services, and this is really the added value. At the end of the day, you can't really distinguish electrons, but yes, services make a difference, and people really want to have something that's tangible, and you know, this kind of offering really appeals a lot to residential customers. And stop number three is Zenic. Uh, behind us are two different storage units, one with lithium ion, one with lead acid. Gertz, w what is this saying? Why is Zenic offering these two different units? Well, historically, Zenic mainly had lead acid systems, but with a significant price decline that we've seen for lithium ion battery cells, now they have an equally affordable system based on lithium ion. And obviously, with consumers, lithium ion technology is a lot more popular than lead acid batteries. Just if you compare the two, it takes up much less space because it has a higher energy density. And Zenek are also moving into the services space, not dissimilar to Zonin? Well, actually, they even have a bigger portfolio than that. So my impression is Zenek really wants to try out what catches the attention of the customer. So they have one product which is comparable to the Zonin community. It's called Economic Grid, where you basically have the chance to also draw energy from the grid if there is, for instance, phases where there's excess energy in the grid, so electricity prices are very low then you can actually charge also the battery from the grid. But besides that, they also have what they call the um, Zenek Cloud. The idea behind is that when you have excess electricity generation in summertime, you store it to the grid and then you draw on it in wintertime. In a, in a virtual sense. Well, obviously you don't, don't store for half a year. <laughs> so yes, but you know, on a full year scale, Basically, they make sure that the energy that you actually store into the system, you are able and you get it at the same price that you, you are being paid if you actually produce excess energy and you don't consume it in wintertime, you actually draw that energy then in wintertime when the sun isn't shining in Germany. Okay, well, we've looked a lot at the residential space. Let's look, look at some bigger batteries, bigger systems. Indeed, let's have a look. I mean, there's one player actually that does both, so we'll just move across. 
And our next stop is E3 DC. Now, Gertz, the key is in the DC. Indeed. Here we talk about a DC coupled system. And people who are more familiar with battery systems know if you have a very intelligent DC coupled system, you can actually reach higher battery efficiencies if it's a DC coupled system than an AC coupled system. AC coupling has the advantage that you can actually retrofit existing systems. But if you design a new system, you might really look into DC coupled systems. The other thing that E3DC has been strongly looking into is also larger scale systems. So if it's not just for the residential segment, but also for commercial customers. So you can easily scale those systems up to 10, 20, 30 kilowatt hours and still manage them with one single management unit. And um, so you have high efficiencies. And again, what I also like about this company is that they have a very sober approach to the market. So while this is a huge excitement about storage systems, they don't get carried away. And they really say, we have to look to solutions that make economically sense to the customers. And so they might actually have less of a marketing approach, but these are very down to earth people with a very interesting concept. Okay, let's keep moving. There we go. And similar to Tesla in the US, which is setting the pace in terms of bringing e-mobility and storage together to the market, we now have Mercedes-Benz making a very big splash. Gertz, where is Mercedes position positioning themselves? Well, I mean, obviously the German car manufacturers feel challenged by the splash that Tesla is making. So they don't only want to prove that they can make also e-mobility cars, but also that their battery systems are suited for home storage. So with the brand of Mercedes-Benz, they hope to attract customers that so far consider storage system you know more like a technical gadget and so people you know more you know not so early adopter kind of customers would then perhaps be better attracted by you know a supplier like Mercedes-Benz but what is interesting the battery units they have inside actually are derived one-to-one -one from the battery units used in the cars and they also can scale to larger systems so in a year from today we will have close to 30 megawatt hours of energy storage, both first use batteries as well as secondary use batteries used for primary reserve control. So at different sites in Germany, they will set up multi megawatt storage units in order actually to provide grid services. Quite an interesting aspect, I would say. And you can actually make money with grid services as well for storage? Well, the point is this is indeed an open market, so we don't have feed-in tariffs or anything like that. And yes, now storage, our battery manufacturers believe they have the costs down to a level where they can provide at competitive prices this primary reserve control. So let's see if they're successful in the long run. Okay, let's, let's look at more grid level storage with our next stop. We even have one more and that's what's going to be the biggest of them all. And our final stop on this whirlwind tour is Steag from Germany. We're talking about utility scale storage now. Yes, indeed. Steag has developed container sized solutions to provide pr primary reserve control. And we're talking about a significant investment, more than 100 million euros, in order to establish a power of more than 90 megawatts of primary reserve control. You have to compare this to a total market size in Germany of 500 to 600 megawatts for primary reserve control. This means Steag is aiming at capturing almost 20% market share right off the bat. With one project. And indeed, and it's not subsidized, right? They're trying to be cost effective at market prices. So this is quite a challenge, whereas so far, many of the other projects we've seen do have incentives that go along with them. Here, there is no additional incentive provided. So this is quite you know, an undertaking with an investment north of 100 million euros. Well, it's a, it's a really um, forging new territory, this project. At Australia. least in Germany. I know that in other countries like in California, we have also battery storage systems of that size to provide um, grid level services. But for Germany, this is really, you know, a, a first. And the first system, as I understand, will go live in August. And then the next five systems will be grid connected within the next 12 months. So by this time next year, Steag should have those 90 megawatts online. Well, it's an incredibly fast moving space, the battery storage space here in Germany, but also globally driven by falling prices and, and a very dynamic marketplace. Gertz Fischbeck is the CEO of Smart Solar Consulting. My name's Jonathan Gifford, the editor in chief of PV Magazine. And remember to learn more about this project and also Mercedes movement into the storage market. Be sure to pick up a copy of the September edition of PV Magazine Global.